Okay, um, I want to just go over briefly some of the things that we covered in that Kahoot game that uh, didn't work so well today. But this, I would point you to the readings of the Lookout magazine, which I uploaded on the site there, on the canvas. And a lot of this comes uh, really from that. It's just, this is going to be short, but it's going to take a look at some of the ideas and slogans of the Restoration Movement. So uh, that's what we'll that's what we'll begin now. Key ideas of the restoration movement, uh, and it's just this one screen, okay? Yeah, maybe two. Uh, but the idea here is that the restoration movement is going to try to restore the ancient practices or the practices of the ancient church, and they want to use the Bible as their only authority. What does that mean? They don't want to use creeds. Uh, they don't want to use conferences or other sort of human meetings that came up with decisions and drew up documents. They want to look to the Bible and they want to look especially to the New Testament for how the church should be governed and the practices of the church. So the Bible as the only authority, this is a key. Uh, to the Restoration Movement. Rejecting divisions in the church, trying to bring unity, that's another key, and seeking uh, the restoration of the practice of the ancient church. So these are all things uh, that are highlighted in the Restoration Movement. And then there's a few slogans here, a few sayings that uh, they're not just sayings, they become really um, ideas and practices of, uh, of the Restoration Movement. Well, the first one there, no creed but Christ, no book but the Bible. This summarizes the fact that there are no creeds. If, if you go to a Christian church, Church of Christ, um, I've been going all my life. I've never heard anyone recite a creed or ask people to read a creed, uh, anything like that. The Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, and so forth. I remember I went to a meeting of uh, the Evangelical Theological Society. And uh, when you go there, of course, you have a name tag, and it has the name of the school where you are. And, um, and a lot of times uh, people look at that tag and they try to figure out if you're important or not. Are you, are you somebody they should try to talk to? And then also they try to figure out where you're coming from. What do you believe? Are you a Calvinist? Are you Armenian? Uh, are you evangelical? Um, are you fundamentalist or whatever? And so I remember the guy looking at my tag. At the time I was teaching at Kentucky Christian, I think it was called Kentucky Christian College at that time, and he wanted to know what that was and where that was. And I said, well, that's in Kentucky. He goes, well, I know that. So I told him, Grace in Kentucky. Uh, that didn't really satisfy him. Uh, then he said, well, what churches... Uh, you know, control that school. And I said, well, really, no churches control the school. The, ch the school is independent. Well, what do you mean? And I said, well, Christian churches. And he goes, aren't they all Christian churches? And I said, well, yes. You see, the name Christian church is, I didn't tell him this, but it's, it's a generic kind of name that you could apply to any church. And then he said, well, he was getting frustrated and the elevator was approaching his floor, and he said, well, what creeds do you follow? I said, well, we don't follow any creed. He said, you don't follow any creeds? He goes, not even the Nicene Creed, not even the Apostles' Creed? I said, no, uh, we don't follow any creed. Uh, we just follow the Bible. Well, he was not very satisfied with my answers. Uh, now, here's another saying. Uh, that the restoration uh, movement has used. Where the scriptures speak, we speak. Where the scriptures are silent, we are silent. Okay, I see a typo there I'm going to have to fix. But this is it. We, the, where the scriptures speak, we speak. Where the scriptures uh, are silent, we are silent. And uh, so this basically is saying, this is going to allow for more unity uh, we're not going to speak about the things of which are not mentioned in the Bible, and that their opinion, uh, people's opinions, 
rather than what is uh, discussed in the biblical text. So we see that this is a, uh, uh, a kind of saying that is going to say, okay, let's, let's talk about the Bible, let's talk about the Scriptures, and if the Scriptures don't really talk or discuss a topic, then we're not going to get uh, into heavy discussions about the topic. Here's another saying, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, in all things, love. Okay, in essentials. The essential things about, say, salvation, the essential things about the teachings of Christ uh, and who Christ is and so forth. In those, we, we need to have unity. We need to agree. In non-essentials, we can have liberty. You see, this kind of relates to the, the second one a bit. But in all things, we should have love. Now, uh, this is, a, I think, a good saying, and it's something we need to follow. Of course... Uh, you know, one of the things you have to decide, what's essential and what's not essential. And that, that's what becomes perhaps the most difficult part about that saying. Here's another uh, sort of phrase. Uh, call Bible things by Bible names. So try to keep the language of the church in a bi biblical language rather than, you know, sort of human inventions of words uh, that, maybe have other meanings or have added uh, meanings. And then this one, the Bible is our only rule of faith and practice. The only thing we're going to use to determine what we will do, our practice, and what we believe, our faith. And then finally, we're not the only Christians, but Christians only. Okay, So uh, in that, I guess you're seeing a statement saying we're not the only ones who are Christians, but we only want to be Christians. We don't want to be some denomination, some other kind of group. We don't want to follow creeds uh, and so forth. So you see something very heavy, heavily uh, influencing this is the Bible and the scriptures and following those scriptures and uh, putting aside things that have to do from creeds and human writings that are summaries of teachings. All right, so be sure to take a look at that Lookout article, especially, I don't know, from like page 3 to 9. Well, you might want to flip through the whole thing, but especially that article there. You're going to find a lot of this there and explain there. you want to look this stuff over before you take your quiz for this week. All right. Have a great day.